Hope you're all well. I'm really pleased to be here. My first ever TED talk. So, let me ask you something. Um, what do you think that's worth? Ten pound now. It's worth ten pound. Who, who says it's worth ten pound now? We do. The government does. It says I promise to pay the bill. Now, there's one point in this time uh, where this was actually backed by gold. You could, in theory, go into your bank and get gold for your £10 worth uh, note. But that's no longer the case. It's not backed by gold, and if the government has problems, it prints more money. And that creates a problem. That's why we've got such many, many difficult economic problems at the moment. And we've got some real issues, as we all know, going on. And we are really at a whole new financial era. The old days, the banks are losing control. Now, I'm a rebel at heart. I wrote, wrote a book called Rebel Entrepreneur. And I like the idea that we have a new financial era. Cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin are going to change the world of finance as we know it. And the technology behind it, which I'll talk about a little bit later, is, going to, is already impacting how things happen. So I've been involved in Bitcoin now for the last four years or so. Slow clicker. For the last four years or so, I've been involved and I've been hooked from day one. A friend of mine told me about Bitcoin in April 2013. And um, as soon as he said it, I was hooked. And at that time, it wasn't known anywhere near as much as it's known now. And I've had my fair share of ups and downs uh, over the last four years with this business. This has been a, an interesting time, let's say. But certainly in the last year, I honestly believe that Bitcoin has become the new goal, or certainly the new digital goal. Like gold, there's a limited supply. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. I'd love to be a new clicker as well. There'll only ever be 21 million Bitcoin, ever. Now that doesn't sound a great deal. 21 million in the world financial picture doesn't sound a great deal of Bitcoin. But unlike dollar or a pound or a euro, which is only divisible by two decimal places, a Bitcoin is divisible by eight decimal places. So in theory, a Bitcoin could be worth a million pound and you could still send a pound worth of Bitcoin. And that's why the 21 million uh, is, is different in, in terms of how we know um, finance and currency at the moment. And at the moment there's about 16.6 .6 million Bitcoins available and over a period uh, of between now and 2140, so a long time after most of those have gone, the last Bitcoin will ever be available to be mine. Now, whoop, trying to get too close to the... It's not... The price of Bitcoin, this is the price of Bitcoin since it pretty much started. And you can see that not a lot happened for a while, at all. And then there was a bit of an increase, and then it's just gone meteoric. This particular year has really gone unbelievably well. On my mic, okay. Um, so, I'm gonna go back to the old, on the 22nd of um, May 2010, the very first transaction ever happened in Bitcoin. 22nd of May 2010, 10,000 Bitcoins were given, a developer bought two pizzas with 10,000 Bitcoins. And as we speak at the moment, excuse me, I'll edit this out, maybe I'll As we speak, this year, let's talk about this year, it started off at £830 at the beginning of this year. That was the value of Bitcoin. January this year. It's currently £6,200-ish today. £830 in January, £6,200 today. And the amount of people that I have saying, I wish I'd have listened to you Mark, back in April or May or whenever it was. £6,200 a day. 
and the value of all cryptocurrencies, because there's many more cryptocurrencies, not just Bitcoin, uh, as of yesterday, was 246 billion. That's billion, not million. 246 billion market cap as of yesterday for all of the cryptos that are in existence. And yesterday, $7.3 billion worth was traded in cryptos yesterday alone. $7.3 billion was traded in cryptocurrency yesterday alone. Now, going back to the pizza, that turned out to be probably the most expensive two pizzas ever. Because those 10,000 bitcoins are worth 62 million pounds now. 62 million pounds in seven years. Would you be kicking yourself? I've ordered a pizza, I've spent 10,000 Bitcoin, because at the time they were worth nothing. It was really geeks just being involved. I know a guy in California that refused to buy many thousands of Bitcoin for nine cents each. Didn't bother, didn't think it was worth doing it. So yeah, probably the world's most expensive pizza back then, only seven years ago that is. My personal view, is that Bitcoin will hit the $10,000 mark, around £7,200, come some point in January. That's my personal view. And people a lot more uh, intelligent financially are saying the same thing than just me saying it. But my personal view, with everything that's going on, I think it's going to hit $10,000 in January. Now, what do others say? It's not just me saying this. We all know this guy, Richard Branson, says, I've invested in Bitcoin because I believe in its potential capacity it has to transform global payments, it's very exciting. Richard Branson has invested in Bitcoin companies. And this guy, some of you may not know him, this guy is John McAfee. If ever you bought antivirus software, you may have bought McAfee by antivirus software. That's the founder of the company. He's an interesting guy. Um, and he made a bet, I won't repeat the bet, but it's quite dirty, the bet that if Bitcoin didn't hit $500,000 within two years, he would do something rather rude. But you can go and Google that if you want to find out what it was he said. But he's betting there's going to be $500,000 within two years' time. Now you might be saying, Bitcoin, okay, what are real world uses of Bitcoin? How can you get involved? Well, who accepts Bitcoin? Microsoft accepts Bitcoin. Expedia accepts Bitcoin. If you go and book a flight or a hotel on Expedia, you can pay in Bitcoin to do so. Intuit, the software company, they do as well. And a local company, Sky Computers, one of the biggest computer component distributors in the UK, here in Bolton, accept Bitcoin as a payment. Now, the really interesting part of all of this is the technology behind it. And blockchain technology is the thing that makes all of this work. And Bitcoin's relatively old from a technological point of view. My personal opinion is that it's going to become like a gold reserve type currency. But realistically, you're not going to get too many people paying for a coffee with Bitcoin. And there's various technological um, issues with it to, for it to become a transactional everyday replacing your credit card. Pay. Although you can, and there's many places. I went into a bar in the Isle of Man and you could pay for your beer using Bitcoin. But the blockchain technology behind it is where it gets really exciting. Because essentially blockchain is a, a ledger of things that can never be changed. That's in its most simplest form, that's what blockchain technology is. And there's some big things happening. American Express have just signed a deal with Santander to use blockchain technology for international payments coming into the UK from American Express. Santander have been working now for a few years. They've put quite a few million dollars into the research and development of blockchain technology. And they're setting up a payment system that will enable 10 pounds to 10,000 pounds to be able to be sent anywhere in the world using blockchain technology with no one being involved. Who's tried to send a payment and it's took forever because somebody's actually got to process that. You'll have no more of this with this technology. No more at all. So you can see how it's becoming mainstream. And the banks are looking at this. There's 22 banks that are working with some, some of the fintech industry, 22 of the biggest banks around the world that are working with the fin fintech industry to get blockchain technology embedded into their systems. It's happening. We are right at it now. Now, getting started is probably simpler than you think. The 
first thing you need to get started is a Bitcoin wallet. And one of the best wallets around, the simplest wallet, is blockchain.info. If you go to blockchain.info, uh, and they've got 18 plus million wallets, so these guys are secure, they know what they're doing, you can have a wallet on your phone, you can have a home computer, you can even back up um, your Bitcoin to a physical piece of paper. For instance, this is an actual Bitcoin that we produce. And this Bitcoin here, you could have, this is a 10 Bitcoin coin, so if it actually had any Bitcoin on it, it'd be worth 62,000 pounds at the moment. It hasn't got any Bitcoin on it, just in case anybody wants to rob me on my way out. <laughs> but if it did have, you could have as much Bitcoin on that coin as you wanted. And you could have it on a piece of paper, you could have it on a USB stick. You could put it in your safe, forget about it, as a long-term investment. So you can actually make Bitcoin visible. And blockchain.info, they have a great mobile wallet and they have a great uh, backup facility as well. If you want to have other currencies other than just Bitcoin, Exodus.io is the wallet I personally use and you can have about 20 different cryptocurrencies all in that one wallet. Um, and that wallet's great because it gives you some pretty amazing portfolio and it's fascinating when you get into it you can look at that portfolio and how much it changes on a daily basis it's uh, it's pretty interesting to watch and it makes it easy to be able to send and receive cryptocurrency one of the other things you can do is you can actually buy other cryptocurrencies through that wallet it's in my personal opinion the best wallet there is out there as long as you don't want a mobile wallet it's the best wallet to have So if you want more crypto info, and uh, there's an app that I personally think you should get, and it's called CoinCap.io. Okay? If you go to the website of CoinCap.io, you will see the price of Bitcoin and all of the hundreds of cryptocurrencies that are out there change second by second. It's fascinating to watch. If you want that on your phone, you can get it on your phone. And then it also enables you to track your own holdings and what they've gone up and what they've gone down. Great app there if you want it. Starting to accept Bitcoin is very easy. It's easier than you think. If you're a business owner, if you want to be paid in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, it's far easier than you may think. If you want to accept Bitcoin, then the one to use is BitPay. Richard Branson invested in BitPay. So it's a well-backed company. It's probably the biggest merchant out there uh, to accept Bitcoin. You can even with BitPay choose to receive all of your money in Bitcoin and then it will automatically stay in Bitcoin or half of it will come into pounds or let's say your profit margin is 20% on a product you charge, you, you, you're selling. You could keep 20% of that income in Bitcoin and convert the rest into pounds and receive a wire transfer every week or so, whatever they do. BitPay is very good for Bitcoin. Not as good as this clicker. If you want to receive other cryptocurrencies, and there's hundreds, coinpayments.net is the place to use. Currently, it has over 80 cryptocurrencies that you can accept. Now, once you've got these cryptocurrencies, you can convert them into Bitcoin or pounds or what have you want to do. Coinpayments.net is the place to use if you want to accept other cryptocurrencies. And for 0.5%, which for most credit card processing is significantly less than credit card processing, what a lot of people do is give a discount for people to pay with cryptocurrencies for good reason because of all the pricing and, and where we think it's going to go. Also, <coughs> Stripe.com, which is a credit card processor, you can have a, a facility to accept Bitcoin instead of credit card payments. And Shopify, which is the, one of the biggest shopping card systems out there in the world, directly integrates uh, with Bitcoin payment providers. So you could accept Bitcoin for pretty much anything. It's pretty much covered. The future really is now. I'm genuinely excited. I haven't had time to go into my past, but I get excited by a few things online. For the last four years, I've genuinely been excited about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and how it is going to change. And I hope you see from just the short information I've given you the potential that this has got. Not just to change make people wealthy but to change the world in that there are so many millions of unbanked people out there in the world all those unbanked people need to be in business with cryptocurrencies is a mobile phone you can get a mobile phone now for the cheapest 20 pounds mobile phone with an app on it you can accept cryptocurrencies and 
if you want more information, and because I can't cover everything there is to talk about, my talks are normally an hour and a half. If you want more information, uh, I'm literally tomorrow launching CryptoActionGroup.com. It's completely free. Uh, it gives you access to a Facebook group. It gives you access to a weekly webinar uh, with me and other experts talking on it. Uh, we will never try and sell you a single thing on the webinar, which I know as a, as a marketer, I can't believe these words coming out of my mouth, but we will never try and sell you anything on those webinars. CryptoActionGroup.com if you want to learn more. There's so much more to learn. But I think, as my closing thought, the problem with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies have got is that it's so complicated and it needs to be made simpler. And a few of the resources that I've just shown you make it super simple for any of you to start accepting cryptocurrencies now, start building um, your cryptocurrency holdings. My personal advice to everybody is own some Bitcoin. My kids have a Bitcoin wallet. My mom and dad, who are the most technophobe people ever, have a Bitcoin wallet and a small amount of Bitcoin. And I think it's really going to change the future. I've been Mark Byford. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope you've got something out of this about the future of finance as we know it. Thank you.